Good evening. Welcome to Pop Balls, Cameras, and Cars pregame show. I'm Kerry Metz, along with head coach Seth Smith, our, our weekly visit where we'll talk about last week's game, which was a big win for the Wildcats over East Mississippi, and we'll look ahead to the Heinz Ball game as well. Coach, wow. My favorite one yet, baby. My favorite <laughs> one yet. Yes, sir. My favorite interview yet. Yeah, but we just... A testament to what I said after after the Northwest game on the field in a minute. Mm -hmm. You know, that game was about camaraderie and cohesion and belief. And, man, I, I mean this. Our coaches do such a great job each week of preparing our guys. Mm -hmm. and, and they executed it. And the key with this thing was right here. Even when it was ugly and it got dark, our kids just kept believing the whole time. And that's why we were able to win the football game. You're down this ball game by two scores when you go into halftime. When you're walking off W. Holden uh, Stadium Field here, what was you going through your mind? At halftime? Yeah, when you walk into the locker room. If we can just score, get one score, if we can make it a one-score game and put a little pressure on them, we can win. If we just make it a one-score game and put a little pressure on them, we can win the football game. And they did that. A couple of things in this game that stand out. First and foremost, you were without the services of uh, – in Gonzales, you'd had a great, you know, couple of games in a row there. You had to go back to Cabe, and uh, you challenged Cabe in the pregame. You told us a little bit about that in the postgame, but you challenged him about going out there and just basically letting it rip and trusting the coaches. Yeah, I mean, we challenge all the kids every day, but yeah, he's one that I feel like that's an area I haven't done great this year. I haven't challenged him like I have them because he's got as much or more God-given ability than any kid I've ever coached. And there were just times before this game I felt like his body language and his grit on the field didn't match the rest of our guys. So I kind of used Amari and Tyson as an example. I said, if you play like this kid plays, we'll win the football game. And I, and I thought he answered, you know, because as a job, as coaches, that, that our job is to try to squeeze it out of them. And, and their job is to respond. And Cabe responded, and he did. He played. He played like the rest of his teammates, and he was a leader, and I, I'm very proud of him. You know, I shoot straight like Katniss with the arrows on the, uh, all those movies, you know, uh, with Hunger Games. I'll say this. Early in the year, I thought there were times when he held the football a few times when he could have thrown it. Other night, he got rid of the football in a timely manner, a couple big throws for the touchdowns. We'll talk about that. But one throw I'll go back to is the throw he made to Christian White. And, of course, Christian made a great adjustment to get that yeah. catch on third down. But there was one there where I said, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, he's not going to throw it. He's going to tuck it and run. But he threw it back across his body, and we got a big first down. Yeah, you, you know, I know Coach Boykin's been frustrated at times throughout the year. And, and people probably watch, but like, well, we still run the ball a lot. And, and we do. That's a, that's a base part of our game. But, he, you know, coach tries to be balanced. Mm -hmm. All he can do is call the play. The quarterbacks have to execute it. And so many times throughout the season, especially early, we would have guys open. But to your point, we just weren't throwing it. We are just sitting and bouncing, sitting and bouncing. And finally, it was a game where, again, Cade just let it rip. I, I, I felt like it, this was the freest he played. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't play this game worried about making a mistake. you got to play this game expecting to make a play. And this was the first game I thought he played with an expectation. You're down those uh, points at the half, you know, 25-12, uh, you come out. And uh, let's just kind of talk about the lift that Showboat gave us. That play Showboat made, and in my opinion, that was where the game flipped right there. No question. Look, <laughs> Every now and then you get a little lucky at halftime and the good Lord will rain down a little a little extra for you. So at halftime, it's no secret. Look, I, I'm, there's way smarter people than me. But I'm going to call a spade a spade. And I meant this. I said, look, how about, how about when are we ever going to get a scoop and score or pick six, <laughs> something to flip the game? And when, at, at any point in 2024, can we please have a receiver make a play? Can we just please have a receiver make a play? <laughs> And thank God he dropped us a nugget. Showboat gets the scoop and score. And then, uh, a.k.a., I call him Termite, makes the, the game winner right there at the end, Martavius. So, you know, it, it was one of them deals where you know, we asked for two things and our kids delivered. Now, that was pretty cool to see. Go back to the, I want to go back to the, the touchdown before that. Of course, Reeds was the game winner, as it turned out. I want to go back to the run that Javante Caldwell made, the catch and run. Man, he made some people miss. And a simple route. I mean, he's 10, 12 yards down the road. Uh, down the field, should say, catches out on the numbers. And the road ahead wasn't easy. He made it look easy with the moves. Put on. Now, again, look, you know, I, I'm an effort guy. That's just how I am. When you get the ball, be relentless. When you bot, be relentless. When you run your route, be relentless. 
And finally, we had a receiver catch the football, make a move, and to your point, broke a tackle mm -hmm. and scored. And this is a part of that play a lot of people probably didn't see. Howard Kitchen sees him catch the football and immediately turns to go block. When you have that kind of stuff going on, that's when you feel like you have a chance to have a pretty good team. That was that was awesome. Let's give credit to them. Uh, East Mississippi, the first quarter, their quarterback, I mean, he's a good one. He's a great one. He, he was giving us fits, keys. But, you know, the second half, we held him to a field goal. It says a lot about the job that Coach Trahan and his staff did making changes at halftime because in this league, it's about adjustments. It is. And, and, and again, you know, <laughs> you come in at halftime, the other part, you say, what are you thinking? I'm thinking, let's make it a one-score game. The other part, I'm thinking, my God, if we don't make an adjustment, they're going to score 50. Mm -hmm. You know, and credit Trahan and them. They did. They came in and held them to three in the second half. And Ty Keys, I knew he was good. And I'm not just saying this because he got a lot of preseason praise. But once you play him live, I'm going to tell you what. He is a power four, five, whatever you want to call it, quarterback. Yeah, he is. He's an athlete, and, yeah. and, and he's so strong too. This yes. guy, he stands there about six two and a half, two twenty five. Uh, got a very active yes. arm, sees the field well, yes. and uh, somebody's going to get him a great quarterback. They will, you know. And, and to this point right here, that's why I was proud of Cabe. Because if you had not watched any of our games or before this one, and you didn't know Cabe and you didn't know Ty, you would think both of those guys are big time quarterbacks. Okay, numbers were outstanding. Fifteen out of twenty four, two hundred thirty six yards. Of course, the two TDs there in the fourth quarter win it. And he ran the ball 16 times for 73 yards on a touchdown. Made some great decisions a couple times there in tucking it under and taking off with it. He did. And my favorite part, when he tucked it under, he didn't fall backwards. He actually sacrificed his body and moved the chains forward. That kind of stuff is contagious. When, you, when your quarterback's laying his body on the line, it makes it easier for everybody else to kind of follow suit. We talked about Tyson the other day and, you know, the way he plays. Of course, he forced that fumble that uh, uh, Garrett picked up, Showboat Garrett picked up, ran in. But uh, a lot of people I watched, I called every, I've called every snap since he was in the 10th grade. I, every high school game he played and now up here. And a lot of people don't understand the intensity this guy plays with and also his anticipation. This guy is almost like he sees the future. Well, it, it, it is intensity, but it's also such a confidence. Like you hear people all the time say, you got to play fearless. He epitomizes that. Because if you look at him to the natural world, if I'm 5'5 five, five and the guy I'm going against is 6'3, mm -hmm. there would be a natural hesitation to most normal, normal people. But not to him. Like That doesn't cross his mind. He just plays, like you said, with anticipation. He plays fast. He plays fearless. And my favorite part, he has fun. And he, that kid makes your whole team better. Amari Butler, seven pass breakups on the year. That number of people say, well, seven, that's not much. In this league, when you break them up, that means you got a hand in front of a receiver and knock the ball away seven times. In this league, that's one a week. That's yeah. pretty strong. Uh, and against a good receiver. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Against he's, a good receiver, he's, he's, yeah. He's playing some great receivers. Yeah. He's got seven votes on the year, uh, 21 tackles, two tackles for loss. But uh, another guy, uh, Amari Butler, who's got a lot of opportunity to play at the next level. Yeah. No, uh, I'm sorry. I didn't really, yeah, you know, he's, a, he, again, just like the rest of Coach Sims guys. I mean, you could go Amari, Jaqueline, Zay, uh, Jadarius, J uh, uh, Quando, all of them. But, yeah, Amari's had an excellent year. To me, Amari, because Quandarius and Zay played a good bit last year. But to me, Amari and Jaqueline coming into this year with not a lot of snaps last year, mm -hmm. both of those guys have been super solid because they're covering the fastest people every week. Mm -hmm. You know, they're on the slots, and the slots in this league can go. And the two that go at uh, East Miss had can really go. He made a play the other night. They run that, I call it the drag route. I guess it's like a three and up and a come. They clear everybody out. He made a play the other night. I went back and watched the film that I still can't believe he made it. He was, Honestly, he was almost a step behind. Ball was thrown right, and he took one. I don't know how he did this, but you may recall it. He took almost like a giant leap at the last second. Like he timed it just enough to get there and knock that pass away. That's, that's beyond big time. That's like... I don't know how to say this. You can't coach that. Nothing against Coach Sims, but you can't yeah. coach that. No, but again, that's just that's just straining through the whistle. Like that is a max effort play. Yeah. That's a the only way you make that play again. To your point, is you got to lay your body. Talking about Cave sacrificing for right. a yard. That was probably this that he had to lay out and sacrifice his body to get his hand in there and knock it down. Because if he don't, they catch it and they're probably still running. Yeah. Those are the little plays that may not show up. 
that are huge in the outcome of these games. Yeah. I'm a big guy, but I like little plays. That's right. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so, sir. Let's talk about Hines. Got to go up there and play them. You know, they're, 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 everybody's good. We're not going to break that record. We say it all the time. That old, that old record spins. Everybody's good. But, you know, this team beat Jones a couple weeks ago. They went over to Southwest. Southwest had uh, got on them pretty quick, you know, with some big plays, and uh, they couldn't come back. But, uh, you know, they're going to be ready to play us when they come over there. they got a lot of celebrations, Hall of Fame, all kind of stuff they're going to be doing. They're going to be pretty fired up for us. Yeah, it's a big week for them. And, and for us, it's really simple. You know, their records are relevant. Mm-hmm. And we're finally getting to the point. Last week, I told them, look, if you play East Mississippi based off their helmet and their decal, you're not going to beat them. Mm-hmm. You're not. You, but you're not playing You're not playing a, a decal or a helmet. Mm-hmm. You're playing to our standard. That don't matter to us. Just like the Hines record, you're not playing to their record. Play to our standard. And if we do that, we'll be fine. If not, if you just roll the ball out there and think because they're having, you know, they have a losing record, you go, that ain't going to happen. It's college football. Everybody's good. Coach Williams is a great coach. They're going to play hard. They're going to be ready. And it's going to be a war. He's been in this league eight years. He's got a good staff. he got a lot of experience on that staff. Guys that have been at different stops in this league, they're going to be well prepared for us. Coach, uh, looking at that game, any key that we got to do? I know effort on that, but is there any one thing against them we got to do to win that ball game? In your I mind? think ball security on offense, for one. Mm-hmm. And then defensively, we got to do a great job of containing a quarterback. they got two quarterbacks who are very athletic. They do a good job of moving them outside the pocket. And, and I think the key is early, we've got to grab momentum early. We've we got to grab momentum early because just two weeks ago, they beat a Jones team who was nationally ranked. Mm-hmm. You know, I know uh, Southwest beat them last year and was able to get the win. I mean, last week and get the win. But Hines is a good team. Their record is irrelevant. So as long as we don't play to the record and we just play to our standard, you know, it, it, it'll, it'll be an, an exciting night. Coach, I always appreciate your time, appreciate your insight, and uh, hope we get a win here and then come back and close it out next week against Jones with a win and see where the old chips fall. Looking forward to it. Go Wildcats. Appreciate you, Coach. Yes, sir. We'll take a break here on the Pawpaws, Cameras, and Cars pregame show. Be back in just a bit.